That's a great segue into uh, when we talk about interactions, about talking about the second class of drugs and the newer drugs in particular, the NK1 antagonists. And Eric talked about uh, NK1s, and you want to just talk a little bit about uh, the development of yeah. Of so those the, the most common uh, drugs that um, we have in the U.S. are a prepotent and fosprepotent, and I think Charles is, uh, has some great knowledge on both of them. The um, a prepotent is primarily oral, and fosprepotent IV. And I think based on where you are um, in your institution, Jim can probably say uh, you either use a prepotent or fosprepotent. That's correct. Um, so, so, Charles, we, you yeah, did some of that work? Well, I, I actually didn't do any of the work, but I've been around for a while, and <laughs> so I was around during the work. But here's a prepotent was the first one that came about. It's an oral one. Uh, and initial studies that looked at it with a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist or without a 5-HT3 antagonist. Mm -hmm. And if you give it alone in the acute setting, you get a lot more nausea and vomiting. 50% of the people were vomiting with, with uh, the NK1 receptor or prepotent alone if they didn't get the ondansetron at that time or granisetron, it was one of those two, two versus 80% were not bothering if they got the granisetron. So in the acute setting, the 5-HT receptor antagonist is better. But then in the, and then in the chronic setting, the delayed setting, the, the, the uh, uh, prepotin was better than was the granisetron. But add them both together, you get even more benefit from, from that. Mm -hmm. So that came around, that was a three-day regimen uh, and all. Then came fosaprepin. And fosaprepin is just the IV formulation, if you will, of the same type of drug, and you give it intravenously only on day one. Going back, the, the preptent was a three-day regimen. Some people couldn't afford the other two days. You probably get a lot of your benefit with just the one-day dose, although that hasn't been proven and shown. But fosaprepin came in, and Steve Grunberg did the trial looking at one day of fosaprepin versus versus the three-day prepotent, and uh, patients did equally well, and there was little in the way of side effects and all. It was only for one dose. And most patients got cisplatinum in that particular trial. We changed practice at our, at our shop, and once we, we, when we change practice, it's automatic. Everybody gets this unless the doctor changes it, and we changed everything from a prepotent to fosaprepotent. And then the nurses a while later said, hey, wait a second, we're getting a lot of venous toxicity, especially with adromycin-based regimens. Now at Mayo, we don't use central catheters all that often. Mm -hmm. We've, that happens probably 20% of my patients, mm -hmm. whereas other practices, it's more like 90 or 100%. We don't see the oncologist for chemotherapy until they get that. But for peripheral there, we got up to 50% of terrible sort of venous toxicity mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. And others over in Japan reported the same sort of thing that we did. So we switched back to IV, to the oral prepotent. If people have peripheral IVs, mm -hmm. then if the central IVs, it wasn't mm -hmm. a particular problem there. And it wasn't, and again, it, it, was, it wasn't seen with Grunberg, so it was seen a little bit more as 3% versus 1%, I think, in the paper. Right. But in ours, it was like 40% when you got multiple doses of adromycin sort of, sort of therapy. So those were the, the things that came around. And then, then there are newer drugs that have come about, which mm -hmm. we'll probably talk about mm -hmm. in a bit. Mm -hmm. and I think one of the, maybe Jim, I don't know if you've done this, but at least at our institution for the fosaprepotent, if they do have that bad experience, um, we just put it in a larger volume. Yeah. I, think, I think many practices yeah. do now. Um, as compared to the label dosing. So you want to talk about we, that? We do do that. We will put it in a larger volume, although our, most of our patients will have central catheters. Yeah. We do use the one-stay dosing up front, so we, uh, we haven't had a major problem with that. Yeah. But those mm -hmm. that do, we will put in a larger volume. So, so we, we did subsequently look at the cisplatin burst based as opposed to the AC right. with peripheral, and they have about 15, 20 percent of them have a problem as opposed to 40 percent. So it's less of that, and it's later on, it's after multiple dose, doses of it as mm -hmm. opposed to after the first, second, or third mm -hmm. dose of the adromycin. So. so cumulative irritant of peripheral veins, basically. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. But if you have a central vein, then you're okay. So are you giving oral aprepidin all on day one, or are you still using the tri-pack? The, the, the three, three day, but sometimes, you know, for financially, they can get day one in the clinic, and they can't get the other two, and you say, you know, you're probably going to do all right mm -hmm. with, with it, or... That was yeah. my experience, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so they uh, often didn't fill the prescription for day two and three. Yeah. And, and if, so they fine, if they did fine, if they did fine, they did fine. If they didn't, right. if they had bad experience with that, then, then the next time you up, up them, like maybe give them day two and three or something like that. Yeah, it's interesting. We're on the side where 90 to 100 percent of our patients have porticaths, uh, particularly for AC-based therapy, because we're afraid of that, so we don't see that, and yeah. we use a uh, phosphorepinant. So now